Hi, everybody. How's it going? Thank you for, for being here with us. My name is uh, Ramiro. I am the CEO and co-founder of Octeto. And here with me is Arsh. Hi, I am Arsh. I work as a DevX engineer at Octeto. And this webinar is going to be about a topic which is very close to all of our hearts. And it is also a topic which has been recently, you know, gaining a lot of traction in the industry. And suddenly everyone seems to have realized its importance and they're talking about it. And that topic is development experience. So before we proceed further into the webinar, like I want us all to be on the same page about this. So Ramiro, let me ask you, like, what does DevX or as the title of this webinar is like, modern DevX mean for you? That's, that's a great question. And as, as, as everybody here can, can imagine, it's a topic that we here at Octeto, um, we discuss this a lot. Um, at a very high level, you know, developer experience is all about making the life of developers easier, right? It's about making sure that everything that a developer needs to be able to be effective is taken care of, ideally, automated. That's that's what we think here at Octero. Uh, everything we do through product, through our content, when we go and talk to customers or open source users is really focused on this. What can we do to make the development of modern applications easier? Now, typically, we only think of the experience as, you know, the things that you run on your laptop, your services, your, your tooling. But as, as you'll see today, after talking to like hundreds, maybe thousands of, of people as, as we will Octero, we need to push this forward, right? We need to think of the modern life experience as not just compute, not just Kubernetes, but truly how do we include everything that a developer needs to work, databases, dashboards, compute, Kubernetes, code, into a single unit right the environment so it's easy for everybody to use but we'll talk more about this um but it's it's very I, exciting and we want to show you something that we just released a couple of weeks ago so it's uh it's really it's really exciting i agree and i think like it makes sense also like because like for the past three four years all we were seeing like uh, was just like optimizations on the production side, right? Like how do we run at scale? How do we have the most efficient CI CD processes and all that? And in that, like in that rush, I think the development side got ignored. Like people stop, you know, taking a look at how the development across the organization is working. Is it too long? Are the developers enjoying it? Or is it just a frustrating experience for them? So because of these reasons, we feel like, uh, DevX has become a very important topic in the industry today. So now that you all have like some idea about what uh, modern DevX means, we want to discuss what are some of the tenets of building this modern development experience. And I want to first talk about the three C's from the perspective of a developer. So for me, like as a developer, the first important thing is creativity. Developers want freedom and freedom means like freedom to experiment. They want to try out new ideas. They want to try out bug fixes and all of this like needs like freedom in they, they need to have freedom in like their thinking and they should not be blocked by organizational tasks, right? Let's say I, want, I have a really cool idea of the app, of an app or I found a fix for this bug, which has been annoying users for weeks. And now I realize I need a resource for that, maybe like a cloud resource. Maybe I need to try it out with the S3 bucket. Now, while I have that like passion and energy to work on that. I do not want to, you know, destroy that by creating a ticket somewhere or, you know, pinging people from the uh, infrastructure team. And then like, if you're working asynchronously, people might be in different time zones and waiting on others. So this creates a blocker for creativity and this takes away the freedom developers have to experiment and try things out as they wish. The second important tenant I feel for developers is confidence. Confidence in the code they write, confidence that what they have written will not break production systems. And the way we currently distill this confidence, I don't like that way. Like what we do is we ask developers to commit their changes and wait for like hours for CICD to, you know, give them that green check. But that's not fair, right? Like if I have made a small change, I should not have to wait for 
an hour to just be certain that is this working or not. I should be able to iterate faster. These feedback loops, which tell me when I have to improve my code should not have me waiting for hours. The second way uh, like orgs implement this is they give access to people for staging environments. And that again is not an efficient solution, right? Like, because when someone else is using a staging environment, other people are blocked from using it. Often you have to like ask for access and then like as more people get involved in this chain, the process becomes complicated and the like the entire dev loop just increases. So we want to instill, we want to give developers, like have them work in an environment, which is like production so that when they are working, when they are writing code, they have that confidence that this will build when pushed to production. And the third most important thing for developers, when I feel you are thinking about creating a dev experience for them is collaboration, right? Because we don't just like, nobody is individually working on a repo. Everything is like a collaboration between teams or collaboration between different developers in the same team. And collaboration only works when like you are able to, you know, uh, see each other's changes effectively. So we'll soon see like how we have designed Octeto in a way that is like very friendly towards like collaboration between not just developers, but different teams also. I'm really excited to show you that bit, but uh, these are the main things which I feel like are important for developers. Ramiro, what do you think is this, like, what is, do you think is the side of the story from like a platform engineer's point of view or an infrastructure person's point of view? Yeah, I know every, every point you mentioned is very important. Um... But as you all know, right, like platform engineering is quickly becoming one of the top of mind concerns of organizations everywhere. And with good reason, because in order to enable everything that Arsh um, talked about, creativity, confidence, and collaboration, you also want to make sure to enable that at, you know, as a company-wide initiative, but also with control in a way that is automatic and available all the time. And I'll start by talking a bit more about governance, which is one of the um, very you know, important topics, especially as we scale up organizations. You know, when you have a small company, a small team, you know, every developer needs that freedom to like pick their own tools and you know, like find out what works for them. However, as you scale, this is no longer feasible because as an organization, you need to ensure that certain standards are applied. From one, from one side of the story, you want to, you know, relieve developers from having to make these choices. But also as an organization, you need to ensure that, you know, you're compliant. If you're, if you're like SOC 2, HIPAA, you have to be compliant. You want to make sure that everybody's using the tools that the company approved, that you stay on their budget and all those things. It's not the most exciting thing, I agree, but that's where automation comes in place. Like the goal of this is, you know, we don't want to go back to the old world of like developers needing to open a ticket for everything and ask for permission. No, you want it to be fully automated so that developers don't have to worry about this. They don't have to think about it. You set up a sandbox with the rules and then everybody that plays on that sandbox, so to speak, is able to do it confidently, create with creativity and without having to worry about, am I doing the right thing? Did I pick the right solution? Am I compliant? All those things need to be there as an organization, you need to have the visibility and the understanding to enforce it as needed. You want to automate it because you don't want to have to like think about it. You want to make it self-service. You want to make sure that your developers are empowered to develop and focus on your business goals. And finally, and this one is, is very important. I don't think people talk about this uh, enough. It has to be available. As we make this move to like centralized platforms, you know, they have a lot of great, and I think it's a good idea, but you need to keep them running, right? The moment that your platform is, is having issues, it's slow. It's no longer just affecting one developer, right? It's not like, hey, my laptop is running slow. I need to reboot it. If your platform is running slow, if your platform is having scaling issues, this is now going to affect your entire organization. So as, as you all think about, as we all think about developer experience automation, as we all think, okay, what is this ideal state that we can, set up to you know, make sure all of our developers are effective, are creative, are confident, and can collaborate. Think of these three tenants, right? Governance, um, confidence, no, governance, automation, and availability as 
as you know, as, as things you have to aspire to. It's it's very important as we all strategize, and as you'll see today, it's it's something that we in Octeto take very seriously. It's embedded. It's part of our DNA. It's embedded in our products. And in a moment you'll see. But regardless of the solution you pick, regardless of where you go around, um, do keep these six tenants in mind as you design the developer experience of your dreams for your company. So thanks for that. And I think now people have like an idea of what things to you know, aim for, what things to, uh, what things they should look for in a platform. The obvious question now arises is how do you go about designing this, right? Like we talked about different stakeholders. We talked about platform engineers. We talked about developers, and then there is a product team. How do all of these fit into the picture? So this is something like we considered carefully, like when we were looking to design a solution for this problem. And we feel that a development experience, a holistic development experience should consider all of these stakeholders in your organization. Like we discussed, there's the one set of people like the platform engineers, the infra people, they should be responsible for like, uh, you know, packaging everything developers need in a modern dev environment, defining that as code, which you'll see how uh, we do that in the demo. But once that definition has been done by platform engineers, these environments should be automated for developers. They should just have to clone the repo, click a button, and then they should have their entire you know, app ready to be developed on. And this should abstract away all the complexities of like the cloud from developers because that's not where their bandwidth should go, right? So like Octato's dev environments like encompass everything. They take care about, they care, take care of Kubernetes for you. They take care of cloud infrastructure, data, Docker, everything is managed and developers do not have to deal with this. And once developers are done, working on their code, making their changes. Collaboration, like we talked about, should be easy. Collaboration with product teams, collaboration with test teams, QA teams, all of this should be easy because these teams have, a, like their opinion needs to be earlier in the feedback cycle because you cannot wait for like, when you push to production or staging environments because iterating at the end is way tougher than iterating at a initial point when you're just making changes. So. I'm really excited to show you like how Octeto fixes this by like providing endpoints, which you can share with anyone in your team and not just developers. So people who do not know how to write code or build code, they don't have to build it to see your changes and they can just hit an endpoint and see the changes. So let's uh, talk about what we have now added to these modern dev environments in our latest release. Yeah, this, this, is, um, this is very exciting. As I was saying earlier, when we started Octeto, we were very focused on, on helping developers with their microservices on Kubernetes. That was our goal. We now you know, have seen that world advance. And as we, as we talk to developers, as we talk to platform engineers, CTOs, you know, everybody up and down the, the engineering stack, so to, so to speak. One thing became very clear to us, it can be just about Kubernetes resources. That's a great way to start developer experience, but not everything lives there. So today we're gonna show you um, kind of what we propose as, as the next generation, so to speak, modern developer experience, where we're gonna expand this experience to more than just Kubernetes. We're talking about applications running you know outside of of your clusters maybe even by a third party databases functions other third party apis but not only these also we want to enable you to bring in other things just as documentation feature flag services reporting dashboards into the developer experience so you can build this experience where developers have truly everything they need to develop in a single place. And, and that is what we see as the role of Octeto in this, is this platform that allows you to deploy your entire experience with one click, it's configured, going back to those six tenants, right? It's configurable, it's self-service, it follows all your governance rules in order to enable your developers to be creative, to go fast, to collaborate and, and truly build um, you know, modern applications as fast as possible 
so you can ship value to your customers as fast as possible. I think like uh, that we have been talking about this and now people are excited to see this. So do you mind, let's just jump into the demo and yeah, show, it's time to show the what demo. we are excited about. All right, uh, I am sharing my screen. Here we go. So for those of you who are new to Octeto, what I'm showing you right now is our dashboard. In this case, I already deployed in order to save time during the webinar. Uh, Ramiro, could you zoom device. in a little bit? Like, I think the text might be. Is that better? Yep. Excellent. So when you log into Octeto, right, you have this dashboard where you're going to be running your dev environments. In this case, you can see I have multiple environments. For, and I'll go through them on a second. But real quick, the way this works is your teammate will click on Launch Dev Environment. There will be a, a list of predefined environments or, or experiences, as we we're talking about them today, to deploy. You're going to click in one button, and that will deploy your application. In the world of Octero, everything happens on, on your clusters. It will build your containers. It will create any necessary resources and it will give you an up and running application. Initially, you know, our, our initial vision was, okay, you have microservices running there, these three things. And as Arsh said, that is a great start of a modern experience. You wanna give your, your team the ability to spin up an environment in one click, everything remotely. It's fully automated, it's fully orchestrated with all the policies, because you don't want developers to have to go and do this manually. That quickly becomes um, a time sink. So. In this case, we have the environment running. So the first thing that you can do is actually use it. In this case, we build this, um, this application that we're calling the, the Octaco Shop that mimics you know, the, the different aspects of operating a restaurant. You can take your order, you can send the order to the kitchen, and then you can send the, the order into billing to calculate the check and charge your customers. One of the first things that you gain with this orchestration is Every developer or everybody in your organization, really developers, designers, PMs, can very easily deploy a copy of, of that experience and, and it's accessible to them. So in this case, I can actually use the application, right? Three tacos, let's say two burritos, and then I'm gonna place my order. And behind the scenes, this is using, you know, the real application. If I go back here, you know, I have more, more microservices in this case, the kitchen microservice. I click on the endpoint that is just for me. And you can see that now there is um, service to service communication. In this case, I have my orders. So let me just zoom in a bit. And you know, in this case, this app, the way it works is you click on the, on the ring, on the bell, you ring the bell when the, um, the application is ready. Uh, the, sorry, the, the food item is ready. So in this case, imagine cook went out, made the burritos, made the tacos, you click on it, it's done. And then internally we'll send then a message to the final piece of the application, which is the check. And I have a check here. I had three tacos, two burritos, $23. I can click on this and I can see my receipt where you know, I can print this out if I had a printer and, and show this to my customer. This is the first step of you know, what we see as the modern dev experience, one click, the environment is up and running. It's the same for everybody. Everything is defined on the repository. So you are defining your experience as code and everybody can deploy it regardless of their expertise with Kubernetes, with your application. And this is very important because one of our goals as we think of this modern development experience is it has to be more than just about developers. You have to design this with a more inclusive approach because you want more people to be involved as Arsh was saying earlier on the feedback cycle you want product designer stakeholders maybe even your customers so the easy you make it for everybody to interact in this case I deploy this application of my main branch but it could be any other branch any other commit um, as you include more people you build better solutions they're faster because you can receive feedback earlier on the cycle, they're more robust because you have all the components there with you. And at the end of the day, as I was saying before, 
do you give the, your organization the ability to ship software faster to be able to deliver value quicker, which is what it's all about, right? At the end of the day, pretty much every company builds software in the world and the better we get at it, the better we're going to be at shipping better to our customers and, you know, defeating the competition if, if you're in, in one of those competitive markets. And I just want to highlight like how easy it was to, you know, spin up this environment and get this entire application running. Like, I just want everyone like who's attending to think about it for a minute. Like, imagine if you had to, you know, develop this application locally and bring these microservices up. Like, first of all, if, if you just wanted to change something on the front end, you would have to see that you would have to bring up like the kitchen and the menu microservices. Then you would have to make sure that your S3 bucket in AWS is running. If it's not running, you have to create it. And all of these additional tasks, which Octeto just automated for us. And in like almost a minute, the entire environment was up and running. And these endpoints, uh, Ramiro showed, like when you start to get to the development phase, you can uh, use Octeto to make changes. And as soon as you hit save, your changes are reflected live at these endpoints. So you don't have to like wait for the CI to build your changes because Octeto synchronizes the code you write with the code running in the cluster. So instantaneously you see your changes and you can send them to anyone on your team. And if you're attending this live, I have dropped like one of the services in the chat. I want you to try this out, like visit that endpoint. You can actually see this application running. And if we were to make a change, you would also see that. So these are some things which I feel really unblock like all the um, barriers which come when you are developing in a larger team and help everyone collaborate more effectively. And and, and collaboration is, is the key. Um, this is something that we talk a lot if you if you've seen any of our of our you know conferences webinars if you've joined us before you know we talk about this a lot and it's key because you know software development is a, is a team sport it's no longer just one person building everything right we want to have multiple disciplines everybody working together and that's where thinking in terms of platform thinking in terms of developer experience really makes a huge difference when it comes to collaboration inclusiveness and all these things now if you see Noctero, you'll say, hey, I've seen this before. Yes, you deploy your environment one click. Well, if you look, and, and you will be right, um, the big kind of new thing we're showing today is this concept of ex external resources, which is everything that is running outside of, of Kubernetes is part of you know, building this more comprehensive, modern developer experience. So in this particular application, we have four examples of that that I want to show you. Um, Real quick. So as you see, we have three services. We already show them the menu, the kitchen, and the check. But that's not all we have here. If you notice here, we have a few other elements. So I'm going to start by clicking on the readme. The readme in this case is acting as live documentation that you can put right in front of your developer's eyes. In this case, we're using this to show you the architecture of the application. Uh, but this could be anything, right? This could be how to access a service. Who do you need to contact in your organization if you have any questions? Um, how do you call the APIs? Which APIs are available? Like, really, the, there's no limits to what you can display here. In this case, just real quick, uh, we're showing the architectural application. It has a menu service, a kitchen service, a check service. And you'll see through this diagram that we also have an SQS queue and an S3 bucket running on AWS. High level, the communication between the menu service and the kitchen service is performed through an SQS queue because that's a great pattern for scalability. And when the check service calculates the check, the actual physical artifact, because you want to keep that longer, is stored on the S3 bucket. And this is something that, because we're embedded in documentation as part of this artifact that we're calling the environment, as part of this dev experience, we make it easier for everyone to understand, hey, what is going on? Why, what I just deployed? You can add some links. There's some markdown. In this case, is the readme of how to run the sample. But you get, you get my point. But that's not the only thing. If we go back to the, um, if we go back to the documentation, you'll see that we're talking about SQS and S3 bucket. And these are, in this case, the sample uses AWS infrastructure. Normally, as Sarsh was saying, kind of like you will have to manually provision these things. You have to go 
run a Terraform script, maybe the AWS SDK, provision those resources, then go start your services, then probably like configure some sort of secret exchange, keys, you need to have access to AWS, all that stuff. It's possible, that's how we've been working since AWS came to be, but it's not very practical and it's not well integrated. And, and that is part of our vision with Octero. If you see here, one click, deploy, and now you can have also AWS resources, in this case, an S3 bucket and an SQS queue as part of the experience. It's all fully configured by Octero, is managed by Octero. And the best part of this is that because the configuration of this is on a file, you as a, as a platform builder are ensuring that things are compliant because you have control of which services, which credentials, quotas, all those things. And from experience perspective, it's not just about creating um, the artifacts, right? The, the resources that also need to be managed, accessed. In this case, for instance, I added this documentation teaching the users, hey, this is how, this is what the service is. This is the role on the application. And I can even include an endpoint, click on it, and this will take me directly to the S3 buckets um, console on the AWS console. And in this case, you can even see here, this is the file we just generated without me as the user of the environment having to think about it. It's all there for me. It's all fully configured. For example, this bucket, which is a very typical um, issue, doesn't have a public policy. Like nobody can go and access all the contents, you know, like by mistake, I can make it available. No, it's all fully configured for me. All I have to think in terms of like, hey, I'm working on this application, click deploy, provision all the resources I need, make sure they're compliant, it's a service, they are there running for me when I need them. And when you're done, you go here, you click destroy, and everything will be automatically destroyed for you without you having to think, okay, I have to go and delete each of these elements. And the same happens with any other resource that you have that you wanna include. In this particular sample, we're focusing on AWS services. So we have S3 buckets, SQS, which is a queuing service in case you haven't used it. Same story, we put a link here. You can see that my queue is there. You can access the queue, maybe use other tooling to access it, but it's all fully integrated and everything created automatically for you. Finally, just to kind of give you an example of when we talk about external resources, how it's not just about infrastructure. In this case, we also included um, this element called API Docs, which it's a link to a tool um, in how to test this API. In this particular um, example, the check service uses FastAPI, which is a very popular Python framework, and it's implemented Swagger. So I can click on this link and I can see live documentation of my APIs. I can even go and you know, try it out. I can try it out, click execute, and you can see that I'm calling the API. In this case, it's just a health check message that tells me, check please, when things are up and running. Um, what I want you to think about this is how everything is there on a single screen. I don't have to go and read through a lot of like documentation pages to understand, hey, there's this tool you can use to test the API. Uh, where is the architecture? Hey, I have to create these other resources. You don't have to do that anymore. You put everything- Think of- mm -hmm. Think of how easy this makes like onboarding, right? Say a new developer joins the team and how complicated things are, right? You don't know like where the documentation is, what this particular S3 bucket is for. And this allows you to simplify all the information which is specific to an application in one place. Like I think that's about this. Yeah, I know that, that ease of use is really what, you know, when we go on and show this to engineers, you know, some of the companies already using Octeto and using some of these features, ease of use is something that comes up all the time. And it's important because you want your dev experience to be easy. You want your dev experience to do complex things behind the scenes. You know, you want to build something that is very robust, that is very capable, but you always want your developers to think about it as like, oh, that's so easy. I run this command, I click this button and everything is ready for me. I can go and focus on doing what I'm good at, which is, you know, like 
working on those features that make your business like different from the rest, right? You don't want your developers to kind of spend hours trying to figure out how do I deploy, create an S3 bucket? Which policies do I put there? Where, which account do I use? No, you define your dev experience, you integrate Octeto with your AWS account, you integrate Octeto with your infra as code configurations, whether you're using Terraform, Pulumi, CDK, the AWS CLI, they all work with Octeto. And then you package all this through this catalog that was showing you a bit earlier so that your team just has to go click on the sample, uh, click on the, on the environment, click launch, wait a minute or two, and everything is there up and running for you. And, you know, what we wanted to do with the samples is kind of give you, you know, help kind of your imagination, right? Like start thinking of what else can I do I want to automate and make part of my core development experience. Um, right now, you know, we have some samples we'll show you in a second. Um, by the way, everything you see here, it's on GitHub. Um, so you can go there, go to the Octet organization, and you can start trying them out as soon as this webinar is over. Um, but just to show you a couple of extra examples, right? We, we created some more samples um, here. This is what, you know, a, an application fully integrated with LaunchDarkly looks like. In this case, we have an application that depends on feature flags, but rather than having a single feature flag environment shared by every single engineer on your organization and worse, shared with production or staging, we configure Octeto to create a single launch darkly environment per developer. So every time you deploy uh, a dev environment, you get a, your own environment with feature flags um, pre-filled. And when you're done working, you just destroy the environment, you click destroy, and the whole thing is cleaned up for you. Um, we have another example, which is you know the same Octaco shop, but this one, instead of using um, you know, S3 and SQS, is using the GCP variants, which is pops up the queue and cloud storage to store the receipts. But as you can see, it's a very similar experience where you click, you deploy, infra gets provision behind the scenes, using the account that you linked with Octero and everything is taken care of you. And you know, finally, it's a more complex example where you can see here in the, in the readme as well, where we're mixing API Gateway, Lambda Functions, MongoDB Atlas, and then a couple of services in Kubernetes to create what, you know, what we typically see in the field as a modern application, you know, like multiple languages, multiple infra providers, docs, tests, everything in one place. And, and this is the kind of experiences that we're helping our customers create and manage. As I was saying earlier, right? It's not just about creating, it's also about making sure they are available for everybody in a way that is compliant, that is self-service and easy to use. So, um, so as you think- All of the <laughs> Go ahead, Arch. examples like um, exist to just to inspire you all. These are like just the start of like the possibilities, external resources unlock. And if we were to like give a recap of what we just saw, you will see that external resources uh, are a game changer when you're trying to create a dev experience for your team because they allow you not only to you uh, add resources from anywhere, whatever you use, be it launched actually dashboards, cloud databases, documentation, anything, and make that as part of the experience for your developers. Make it on demand, make it together in one place so they don't have to run around and you know look for things. So it is the complete package and this is how we feel a modern dev experience should look like. So uh, to wrap things up, like the impact this approach has on modern DevX is what we want to highlight. And the entire thing, like we showed, like bringing the application up, all of that is like very easy to define and standardized. And that happens through an Octeto manifest. One of, uh, one of my favorite things about this approach is that you can have this manifest in GitHub or any version control system, and then you can track the changes you've made to your infrastructure as your application evolved, right? So you have an entire history, like you have a version control history of how the application has evolved. 
So, Ramiro, do you want to add any last things and then we can proceed to the Q&A? Yeah, I mean, just, I think you, you summarized this perfectly and I just want to, like, kind of, like, repeat on, like, what we want with our samples and with this webinar is to kind of inspire everybody to kind of think of what your modern dev experience looks like. Think about how you, what else can you bring in? How can you enable more developers? How can you enable your entire, your entire organization? And, you know, as, as we've seen, uh, repeating a few times, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, when you think of modern dev experience, you know, think of everything. What tools are your developers using? What infra do they need to provision? What other documentation can you make easier for them to, to find? How can you make this a standard? You know, we've, we've worked with a lot of customers that are now kind of creating this standardization where they want to use solutions like Octeto across different organizations because they want to make sure that, hey, everybody has the same kind of environment. And finally, I cannot stress enough the, the power of, of having an on-demand experience where like you can go click on one button, deploy an environment, when you're done, destroy it. Like This is something that we've seen in so many companies and it becomes quickly a game changer because you're no longer constrained by, hey, I have to set up my laptop. I don't want to bring these changes. I don't want to try this other branch because things might mess up. No, you create an environment. You can have multiple of them, different configurations, different setups that are available for everybody. And when you're done, you click on them, you destroy them, and then you, you go to your next task. That simplicity of not having to worry about the environments anymore, it really reduces the toil and makes everything more creative because as you free your, you know, your mind, your head from all this kind of like manual tasks, then you can focus on creativity. On, on engaging with your team and creating new things. So that is something that I you know, always tell everybody. And I firmly believe that the more you automate, the more you have these kind of clearly defined sandboxes on demand, you're not limiting your developers. You're actually giving them the, the freedom to then focus on what they're thinking. Um, anyway, does yeah, you want to drop I think, that, yeah, something else that, like that talk about that like, <laughs> summarizes this perfectly and let's proceed to the q a we have a couple of questions here so andrew conwell is asking how easy it is for a developer to create a new microservice that's a that's a great question so one of the things we do with octero and, and maybe i should show it real quickly um is as arsh was saying everything is defined in a manifest so i'm gonna go and show in this case, going back to our sample, I'm gonna click on the endpoint. Um, yep, I'm gonna click on this, the repo, and I'm gonna open the manifest. So, adding a adding a new microservice to Octero is as simple as adding an element here. Like in Octero, there are three phases for a microservice. You tell Octero how to build, which could you zoom in just a little bit? Yes which at the simplest case is pointing Octero to where your Docker file is. Then you tell Octero how to deploy. You see how we have multiple steps. It's very similar to you know, what you're used to on, on the CI, CD, GitHub Actions kind of world. In this case, you can see that we're using Helm. So adding a new microservice will be like implying, hey, add another Helm upgrade um, step and then you know, if you are something external, you add it here. And then dev, which if you're using our CLI, this is how you tell Octero which files to synchronize, if you want to do something like hard reloading, if you want to forward some ports. So from Octero's perspective, adding a build instruction, a deploy instruction, and a dev instruction is what it takes to add a new service. We, are, we have tooling uh, on our CLI to help you can initialize these files, things like that, if you need help. Um, but it's simple as that. Um, in this example, we're using Helm, but Octero also supports, you can define your environment using Docker Compose, or in some cases, if you just have your Docker file, uh, Octero will infer a bunch of defaults and launch that for you as well. So and it's very someone flexible in that sense. Also ask like, uh, while you're on the screen that uh, where and how external resources are defined. So I think we can also show them yeah. that yeah, yeah. external resources but, are also defined in this manifest. Exactly, so it's no, the great, entire great idea point. that this so manifest controls your infra. Exactly. Have, have two elements. The first is you create this external section where you tell Octero for every external resource what name you want to give it. 
what's an icon and what what icon and what URLs do you want to show? In this case, for instance, this maps to you know, the, the readme endpoint. It uses markdown to show you the notes and the crypto icon. So this one, if I go back here, you'll see it maps to this one. It's called readme. It has the title icon, and this is the content of markdown. Now, that is for static resources where we don't have to provision anything. For dynamic resources, like, like let's say this S3 bucket, you still do this definition because you want to tell Octero, hey, I want you to use this icon. I wanted to give you this name. And optionally, I want to provide this markdown file as documentation. And then on the deploy phase, you uh, invoke your infra as code scripts. In this case, I created a script to deploy, um, to deploy an S3 bucket uh, using uh, Bash and the AWS CLI. But, but this could be, could be anything. Yeah. Exactly. This, this could, could be Terraform scripts. Whatever tools you are using right now. Anything. Exactly. And, and that's something that you'll see consistently in Octero is bring your own tools. We don't want you to like change everything to fit our world. Like, no, Octero works with you to make sure you can bring in your own tools. In this case, we're using the AWS CLI to create the bucket. And then this is kind of the Octero magic, quote unquote, which is the R set and environment variables. Like this one, you can define. In this case, you use this to tell Octero, hey, I want to have this dynamic URL. Um, there's this thing called the env, where you can inject environment variables, in this case, the bucket name, so that then the rest of your application can use it. In this example, for instance, you see that the S3 bucket name, because it's dynamic, because it's based on the name of the user and the namespace, we're just putting it in the environment. And then if we go back to the Oketo YAML, you'll see that when we create the check microservice, we're using that same environment variable to pass this in this case to Helm chart. And then here, because the environment of the docs is also dynamic, we are creating this MVAR, which tells Octero uh, to put this link here. So it's all dynamic. Uh, I know it looks a bit complex, but it's all building blocks. You, know, you have your deploy block, your external block, your icon, your notes. We have uh, a lot of documentation on this and we're doing more samples and videos like this to help you understand, but that is how you bring these external resources. And, and we're gonna have samples, so as she was saying, with Terraform, with CDK, with Pulumi. You know, please please let us know if you wanna see other samples of, of this uh, because we're just getting started with this this concept. So, you know, your feedback and your comments of this is always, it's always super useful and, and wonderful. And I think what makes this easier is the fact is that you don't have to do something, you know, entirely new in most cases because you're already deploying to production, right? So you have all these like shell scripts or Terraform files, which you can just use during your development too. So that simplifies it. I think we can take one last question before we wrap up. Uh, Nitish is asking, which one do you prefer for deploying an application on Octeto Cloud? Is it Dockerfile, Docker Compose or Octeto YAML? That's a, that's a great question, and, and by the way, hi, it's, it's great great to see you on the webinar. You've been a, a wonderful member of our community and, and contributor to our CLI. I prefer Octeto YAML because that gives me more flexibility. When you're using just Dockerfile or just Docker Compose, you are limited to the Docker Compose definition, right? Like you can do these custom things I show you today. With Octeto YAML, you have the flexibility to call all these other things, like on the Octeto YAML, you can tell Octero, hey, use my Docker Compose for infra. But you can also tell Octero, do these extra things like provision, you know, a database using Terraform or link to this pre-existing, you know, dashboard that I created on Datadog. You can do a lot more. That's why like, it's quickly becoming the kind of the preferred way of defining the environment because it's a lot more robust, in my opinion. Dark Compose is a great way to start because especially if you already have it, just drop in Octeto, it will run. But as you start to like see and adopt some of the Octeto way of doing things, I recommend you get into the to YAML so you can expand your experience and include all these new things like documentation, your experience, dashboards, all these integrations we showed today and, and many other things. And just real quick uh, to David's question on like what type of external resources are, are used. 
pretty much anything has an API you can call. Um, as Arsh was saying, a big part of our goal here is you're going to bring your own infrastructure um, code. You're going to bring your own tools. If you're using Helm, if you're using Docker Compose, if you use Terraform, if you're using CDK, you know anything out there, you bring it, and Octeto will give you the the entry points to use it. And you know today we show dynamic uh, infrastructure we're creating on demand, but we, you could as easily call a database that already is running somewhere. Maybe you have a service on staging that is no longer under development, but you need that API to call. You can put that as well. Um, so um, let's wrap things up. Uh, we'll send everyone who had attended this, assigned this webinar a recording. Thank you so much for people who joined us and stayed with us. Uh, thank you for asking questions. And um, what are next steps? Next steps, we want you to try out external resources. We have published a blog. If you click this button you see on your screens, that should take you and give you a summary of all we discussed. And that should also give you links to all the demos Ramiro was showing. So go there, get your hands dirty, try external resources. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And that's about it. Ramiro, any last comments? No, nope. uh, thank you for joining. I'm looking forward to chatting more with you about your dev experience. And you know, if you if you want to chat, also feel free to chat to me, Ramiro at octero.com. Um, I'm there available. Always looking forward to talking about you know dev experience, Octero, or anything really that makes developers' life easier. Thanks so much for joining today. I we hope this was useful. And you know, looking forward to see what dev experience you're going to be building with Octero. Thanks for joining. Bye.